My name is Mercedes Beckerhoff. I'm from Okeo Winge, and my Tewa name is Genfe Zawa. I started taking pottery classes. I think this is my third class now that I'm ending. My first year of pottery here at, at Po was the Macacious Clay, and I took that with Clarence. I, I can see the difference from the very beginning till now and I'm able to make a, a nice size pot, whereas before mine were really tiny. So that I've advanced with that. I'm getting used to the sanding and um, uh, just the designs because it's easier to do a design on a flat surface, on a flat surface pottery about this round rather than a, a round pottery. My mom used to be a potter. Um, she did pottery, all of her pottery, and that's probably why I do a lot of figurines. Hers were little animals. Hers were skunks and turtles and frogs. I really don't have a style yet. My style is eclectic. I've, I've made um, bowls and I've made um, animals figurines. Our village at Okeawinge, we had the pots that are with the straight little lines and they go up and down or over and up like like peaks or across like that but short. And I've noticed that we don't have too many of those so I want to do a lot more of that. I did one and it's not easy. So I want to work at, at getting better at that. I do want to make um, little storytellers too because with clay you can make anything that you want you don't have to be I think in my opinion proficient at one my name is Tony Chavaria and I'm from Santa Clara Pueblo I'm like with the uh, traditional um, uh, polychrome work but also I guess kind of colorful or both um, um, whimsical like figurines that the, they've been making you know, for quite a long time as well and some of them have pop culture references or um, but also some of them are just like the ones that you know existed way back when to of people just kind of depicting uh, the, the, the things around them the animals and whatnot that they saw one is a, a bowl that I've got kind of a did a mixture of both of the traditional designs but kind of like sometimes just my own uh, uh, kind of like spin on something I think that people would find interesting and then of my the figurines it's also, again, that same mix. When I make the figurines, it's kind of like, um, there's sometimes I have these ideas that have been percolating for a long time in my head. And that's what's been great about actually taking classes because it allows me to actually uh, to create these things that I've been thinking about for a long time. Or I just try to make these things that, um, that have been suggested or talked about. That's also nice where the dinosaurs will come from. I get inspired by these uh, pieces that I've seen that were in these South American collections that were supposed to represent uh, people's contact of dinosaurs. But they're they're probably all hoaxes. They also look they look really weird, and so I really like them. I try to make some pieces inspired by them. Santa Clara pottery is mostly known for its carved blackware. You know, just like Santa Alfonso is known for its black on black pottery. Although you know both of those you know as seen as traditional are only about a hundred years old, you know, as far as like their prominence in the market. You know, they really only start showing up until the 1920s. The work I've been doing is kind of like both contemporary expression, but it's also a callback to that earlier form, you know, when a lot of people were doing different types of uh, polychromes. Looking forward, but also, you know, respecting the past too. I'm really grateful being able to uh, be able to participate in classes and be around so many different uh, creative people, you know, at the, you know when I'm here, it's always been uh, really inspiring to me. Hello, my name is David Sloan. I say David Sloan, Dasha Jenny. Taking the jewelry class at the Poe Center. So I made this bolo tie with a tiger that's been etched in leather with a laser cutter, and then riveted it to a piece of silver that I fabricated the little thing that holds the bolo tie. And then on the end, from a flat piece of uh, metal, I'll roll that out a few layers and then I'll cut out these top designs 
and lay them on top and solder them and then I'll roll the whole piece of metal until you can finally increase it over and then you can solder them on. I got into jewelry making actually bringing some foster kids up here. We were looking for some summer programs to take them to and I didn't even really know Poe existed but I kind of had an interest in trying to make jewelry. I didn't really have the first idea of how to do it. I've always been a like graphic kind of artist like drawing and painting. Probably been doing jewelry about two, since 2008. It's just kind of just amazing to see how you can apply the art or the the techniques and everything into making it something that you want to do and really the options are limitless. Mr. Bear is the first piece I submitted in the exhibition and it was inspired by the nature and the sandstone mesas on my land. I'm very inspired by nature and, and animals in general, so a lot of my pieces will reflect that. It was fired by two methods. The first was the reduction method, taking out the oxygen and turning it black. And the, uh, the bottom piece of, of the bear was fired by an oxidation method, and that's fired in a pit, so it gets more oxygen and more of the natural micaceous color that you see. And the other piece is called United, and that piece is, um, meant a lot to me because it was inspired by our indigenous people's fight to keep water clean. Way back when we used these pieces to uh, carry water and drink out of and so I made this piece in honor of that. It has two avanus that meet united together. Um, we can keep our water clean. I'm from uh, northern Arizona. My name's uh, Daniel Jim. One of the pieces that I've done, which is uh, I call the the messenger, which is going to be a, a pendant necklace. I used the method of the uh, ingot casting and rolled it, stamped it, so I got different gauges in this. And the stone is uh, also from Nevada, Rhone Mountain, turquoise. I also did a a bracelet, which is a, a casting method, tufa cast. It's also a sterling silver. I ended it with uh, putting a stone on the end. When, when, when I do a casting, this is the end result right here, where the, they call, we call it a spew. When they come out, it's usually like, shaped like a funnel, but I was able to heat it up, pound it down, and make it into a, a flower. They call it a water bird. And the reason why I called it the messenger is because in, in my thoughts and in, in, in the way I believe in who we are, when we do our prayers, you know, he's the one that takes it up into places where our prayers are needed. Hi, my name is Janice Black Elk Jim. My Lakota name is a special one, and I'll tell you at the end. But my piece is halfway finished. I'm entering in some jury competitions up in South Dakota. This piece, it has a Lakota name as well, and it's called Black Elk Went to Santa Fe. It's uh, mainly named after the men in my lineage, the Black Elk men. This piece is gonna take um, at least another three to four months to finish. This is sterling silver, it's a tufa cast, and it took this part here with the antlers three weeks to carve. Then the rest of the body, it followed as well. The rest of it's going to have like a triangle sterling silver frame going around it. And then I'm going to attach um, beadwork going this way, and it'll emphasize the horns. 
And just to let you know, um, my Lakota given name is Chunku Washtabian, which means good road woman. Uh, my family gave that to me because I'm always on my Harley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tony Olver. I'm Dene from Arizona, and I live in Santa Fe for the time being. And I've been taking jewelry classes at the Poe Museum for three years now. I started under Fritz Casus, and now under Eric, and just they both have such unique outlook about techniques and their views on jewelry work. So it's just been really fun. It's been a real learning experience. I love Eric's unique way of doing things because he comes from a pottery world and his designs are very much from, from his pottery. But he does beautiful, beautiful work and it's just like we, have, we seem to be more free spirits. <laughs> Not so much structure, more free spirit, but sometimes, you know, I, I miss that structure. <laughs> Because when I run into trouble, you know, it's like, you know, it's always fun trying to figure out how to fix it and where to go from there. Back when I was a teen, I used to uh, do bezels and set stones. My brother was a very good silversmith, but he was just never sharing and never uh, wanted anybody around when he was working. So it was kind of unique. I've been a clothing designer. I've sewn everything there is to sew under the sun. I'm a beater. And I've done oil portrait paintings, so. I come from a diverse, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Never really considered myself an artist until I came here. <laughs> and so, you know, it's really, it's really refreshing to actually stand up and say, hey, I am an artist and I bring my own creative knowledge and my creative expression to the table, which is quite different from everyone else. My pieces are, the two I've submitted are Lost Wax Cast pieces. It's a ring and a bracelet, kind of done in the same technique of um, just a very free form, melted wax on wax paper, and then I added little silver beads randomly, so no two pieces are ever alike. Hello, my name is Betty Padilla and I'm a Navajo Diné tribe, and I do jewelry. The pieces that I'm submitting to, um, for the show is a Navajo pearl necklace. It's all silver. Uh, I use the star stamping, and the dragonfly is a lost wax piece. I love dragonflies. I enjoy them in the summertime. You see them all over, so why not make one, you know? So I started incorporating it into my silver work. I've never done something like that. It's just whatever comes to my mind. Plus, I'm always sketching, you know? I actually remember or when I was being um, with my grandparents and they were making pottery and I just got a piece of clay and started to work on it and my grandparents encouraged me to, to do, make something and then my grandmother leaned over and says, let me, let me, let me help you with that and started to show me how to form um, a bowl and then into a picture. So that was my beginning. I look and research a lot of the pottery from the southern villages that were from, you know, Quaray, uh, the Salinas Bob area, down to the uh, Piros Tompiros was a lot of, a lot more trading and it had, that was a very different style than what was happening with the north, there's, uh, there were more, uh, there was a good influence from the Miembres uh, people. Um, so there's a little bit of difference and I'm trying to incorporate that and develop my own style and being very unique. <laughs>